Hi, I'm Cédric, and in today's video I would like to talk about one of the camera settings that confused me for the longest time, and that is exposure compensation. In my early days of photography, exposure compensation was one of the settings that gave me the most trouble trying to figure out what they were used for. But then I realized that some cameras, such as my X-T1, had dedicated dials for them, so you'd think it must be a pretty important setting. In fact, exposure compensation is here to help you keep your camera in check. But to understand that, you first have to understand how camera deals with exposure. Every time you shoot in a mode that isn't manual mode, the camera's deciding for you what is the correct settings that will result in a correct exposure. But what is correct exposure for a camera? The camera looks at the scene, assigns it some sort of brightness value, and then tweaks the exposure settings to bring that value to middle grey. But there are many ways a camera could decide what is the brightness value of a scene. These are where the metering modes come in. Essentially, what a metering mode does is tell the camera which parts are more important than others. For instance, the simplest metering mode would be the average metering system, which is going to look at the entire frame, average out the brightness, and bring that down or up. On the other hand, you have spot metering, which basically does the same, except it does it on a much smaller area, usually a tiny area on the center of the picture. The important point is that different metering modes will give you different exposure settings for the same scene. So what you want to do is pick a metering mode that is appropriate for the type of scene you're shooting and will give you the more acceptable results. For instance, spot metering is recommended for backlit scenes because you know that your background is going to be much brighter than your actual subject. You're going to essentially disregard the background because your camera is going to give you vastly different uh, shutter speed and apertures depending on what metering mode you're on. Chances are what the camera thinks is a correct exposure might not be what you think is a correct exposure. The disagreement can uh, have two different explanations. The first one might be that you've chosen a metering mode that's not appropriate for your scene. And the other one is simply that the camera doesn't really understand what's in front of it and is making bad decisions. Uh, one of the common examples is that if you shoot anything that's got a lot of snow in it, then you're being uh, told to overexpose the snow. You're not actually overexposing, you're just telling your camera, no, you're wrong, you need to be one stop over or two stop over. Obviously, exposure compensation only really matters when you're shooting uh, in program, aperture or shutter priority modes. It doesn't really make a difference in manual mode. However, even when you're shooting in manual mode, the camera is still indicating how far off what the camera thinks is the proper exposure. Unless you don't want to rely on that tool, you still want to choose a metering mode that's appropriate for the scene that you're shooting. For instance, when I do any kind of work that involves available light, I tend to shoot in aperture priority mode, that gets me into the right ballpark, and then I use the exposure compensation to dial in what level I actually want. I started doing that because the way to set the shutter speed in the, on the X-T1 is not the greatest. It's a lot simpler to shoot in aperture priority and then use the exposure compensation to actually set your shutter speed. And that's how I discovered, oh, this is what exposure compensation is for. So that wraps up the video for today. If you use exposure compensation differently, just let me know in the comments below. And if you like that video, please give it a like, share, consider subscribing to my channel, and I will keep making content like this.